that sign says that we're on live. Wow. That must be... Talk, must... talk about technical difficulties. Oh, my God. Wow. Hopefully, you're all sticking around. You're on standby. I know we usually do this on Friday. I have to take off the green screen here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to probably do something to... Well, it's not on. I don't think it's on. Uh, no green screen. Take that off. There. That should make the screen a little bit clear, clearer. There. First of all, we logged on and it said it didn't compute. It didn't want to accept the, the, the broadcast. Then we logged into the wrong channel and we thought, well, we can't, we have to be consistent. We have to be, you know, some semblance of consistency. And then again, it didn't accept the, the live feed. And then finally, it, it, it did. Good times. And what a, look, we're like 13 look, minutes late. Good ah. times. And we didn't have a theme. And then last week, we, of course, uh, were visiting with family from out of town. So we weren't on last week. Yeah. So I know we say if, usually it's family related if we aren't going to be on um, on the weekend. But we always try to kind of make sure that we do get on. So we're a little bit um, delayed today, but welcome. Thanks, everyone, for, for joining us. Uh, we enjoyed doing Friday Night Live. As you know, I do I do the Today in History Shannon writes it. What are the sites that you get a lot of information from? For... Uh, this, uh, this Day in Music, um, also um, uh, calendarsongfacts.com. There's yeah. a few that we kind of Let me just put the from. volume down. And then a lot of times, too, I'll just sort of look up, you know, birthdays for today, events that yeah. happened on this day. Um, songs and albums that were a big hits, number one hits, or um, uh, and usually it's that or albums itself. So we're trying to make them. Uh, you know, obviously we're you're always trying because we make a living on YouTube. We're always trying to come up with uh, a, a, something that's going to stick. Something, and you know, we put up the Laura Brannigan one, and that did really really well. Uh, put up the, the Molly Hatchet one, which is another one that did forty thousand plus. And, and then we did some last year that got, uh, I think, six, 700,000 subscribers. But you never know. It's harder to get a, vi a viral video these days than it ever has been. Let me say a quick here. Um, hey, guys. It's Pete from Riverview. How are you tonight? Hey, Hi, Pete. Pete, uh, Rick Pete May. I'll get a hold of you after now, after we do this, and we'll discuss uh, getting together tomorrow night. And uh, Rick May, greetings from Ohio. Time to play that Bengals hit. Whack, whack, like an Egyptian. Hit that like button, folks. <laughs> Yes, please whack, hit whack, that like button. Whack, whack, like uh, John yeah. Adams, hello from Connecticut. I look forward to your broadcast every Friday. Great Thank way you. to end the week. Thank nice you. to have you with us, John. Uh, Bill Griffin, that's easy. In excess, shabu, shabu. Oh, yeah. Another one that came up, I was looking up worst albums. I didn't I didn't, uh, I didn't, didn't get this album because I'm not really a Mariah Carey fan, but I was given this album. Uh, Charm Bracelet, Mariah Carey. Oh. Bing. Here she is. Another one is Love Beach by Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. I didn't think it was as bad as a lot of other people thought it was. Another one is usually, and I love Peter Frampton and the Bee Gees so much. Peter Frampton is like a, a holiday onto himself, but Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, uh, the movie soundtrack. Uh, Darren says, the worst albums are the ones that are recorded by actors, actresses, who oh. aren't musicians. Oh, And some of them, believe it or not, some of them were... Some like the, some of them sang in malls and stuff when they were young or in choirs at school, and thought they were musicians. Then become actors. Uh, like the the uh, to me, Demi Lovato has a nice voice, right? But the, without the fan base that she has, I can't imagine her and the, and the team behind her and the drama with every release. There's always all, all this drama. Oh, I'm gonna let out a secret out of the bag. Caleb Coy of the Elton John band. And I were talking about this today when I interviewed him and he said, yeah, he says, I don't get it. You know, there's always this big thing that gets out. So to get publicity. We have Ashley Taylor. Hey, hey all. Ashley. Showstopper Rob. Good night, John and Shannon. Um, Mutant Rife. I'm not sure the specific album, but it was Butthole Surfers. Not oh, sure I even bought it. Yeah. <laughs> there are some albums that I bought. I mean, I remember there was, I'm just looking through some of the list here. Oh, the rebirth of Venus, Ben Lee. Look at, I've never had that one. Don't want to block Shannon. Never had that. I'm seeing what the some so, what's considered like bad. Oh, Ash. Oh, I am me, Ashley Simpson. Don't be a hater. 
Don't hate. Oh, gosh. Uh, JP Milanos. Oh, my God, there's so many. I lost count. Back in the day, you were lucky to get two hits. The rest was crap. Well, I... I... Oh, someone says Chris Cornell scream. I never heard that out. David Hubbard, that's easy. 40 years ago, I was a huge Beatles fan and really broken up over John's death. I went whole hog and bought two Yoko albums. I think <gasps> one was called It's All Right. It wasn't. It wasn't all right. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, believe it or not, I, I didn't think it was a terrible album or anything. But uh, uh, um, Double Fantasy, because half of the album was Yoko. Um, and John's songs seemed a little light to me. Um, but but I wouldn't call it one of my worst albums. I, I went out and bought that one, of course. But you went Yoko, eh? Oh, wow. The uh, Celine 786, number one Doobie Brothers fan. Worst album, Living on the Fault Line. No Top 40 hit says Michael nope, McDonald has viewed his best songs on previous albums, Take It to the Streets. But Taking it to the Streets, back, yeah. Taking it to the Streets, but but he would storm back Grammys. Minute by minute. But living, I was talking to Jeff Skunk Baxter about uh, Living on the Fault Line, and he was in the band at the time, and he said he really liked that album. He said, I, I, I love that album. I don't know why I didn't have any hits. Um, I didn't love it. I liked it. I, 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 did, I did like it. Uh, Metal Reaper, hey, nice to see you guys. Hi. <laughs> Dave Smith, Long Branch, uh, Penny Whistle's only album. No wonder they gave it up after one, but at least we got the egos out of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hold on, I'm looking for some. Oh, Queen with Paul Rogers. I don't know that comes up sometimes because it didn't sound like Queen. Kind of, let's see what else comes up on this list. A lot of rap comes up. Oh, Megadeth. Super Collider. I don't know the album because I'm not a Megadeth fan whatsoever. Bill Griffin. Love Beach has a good side too, but after brain salad surgery, I thought they weren't as good. Then again, BSS was about as prog as they could possibly get, and a change was probably required. Yeah, well, oh, you know that was going to come up. But again, I don't mind Nickelback. I've never bought a Nickelback album. It's because it's just not my it's not my lane, but, but I never minded them. I don't we don't turn the uh, the radio up or down. Thank you so much for the super chat from the Selene Seven. Oh, sick! Thank six. you. Thank you so much. Appreciate. Appreciate. That. That's very kind of you. Uh, Rick May, Rolling Stones, Dirty Work, Colorful co a Cover, and that's about it. <laughs> I, I has anybody ever bought an album because of the cover? Because I bought uh, I got into Kayak because of the cover to Royal Bed Bouncer, and the North American version of it. I think it's the North American version of it. And I ended up loving that band. Oh, someone put Enya. I love Enya. I love her music because I programmed New Age music for, for quite a few years. I've got Eric, ooh, Mel Donato guitar. Worst one I've ever bought, Van Halen, Van Halen, LOL, for obvious reasons. Then is when I was a preteen and obsessed with Van Halen 1 in where, 1984. Where is that? I didn't know what they changed uh, singers until... Oh, Van Halen 3. Yeah. Until, yeah, Van Halen 3. Yeah. Until I got to... VH3. With the third singer, man, uh, I didn't, um, I didn't mind it, uh, but I don't know. There's a part of me that kind of felt like it didn't sound like Van Halen, even though I, when Sammy Hagar joined, I love Sammy Hagar. The Greenbird, metal machine, metal machine music. Record stores would play it at closing time to clear out the storm. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, hello, Hike with Mike. How are you? Hike Welcome. with Mike, Hike. Hey, Brandon. Good evening, John and Shannon. Celebrating the 40th anniversary of Peter Gabriel's security album. Oh, cool. Was that on the list today? Because I didn't go through the albums today. Um, yeah, I didn't go through the albums. So a lot of times when I do Today in History on the other channel, if I do a major story first, I sometimes don't get to the albums. But from now on, I'm, I'm going to try to pay more attention to that. Um, oh, I, I would have done a whole thing on it. I love that album. Randy Schaefer, Neil Young Trans. Oh, trans. Oh, I remember that in the 80s. We played we played one song off it. What was the single off that? Uh, it was a chunky little song. We played it at K-Light when I was working there. And yeah, he, he's go, he, he goes uh, he goes electric. Electro, really. Yeah. Hike with Mike Motley Crew. Girls, girls, girls. Horrible. <laughs> 
It was catchy though, but I hear ya. Uh, Darren, Dran Dran, thank you, 1995. The cover, uh, the covers album was voted number one worst album on a couple of lists online. It's come on on some list. Oh look, never gone. Backstreet Boys. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. This is some interesting. Oh, someone said Liz Fair, Liz Fair. Hmm. Uh, David Ryder, I bought Zeppelin 3 for the cover. <gasps> Zeppelin, oh my God. Who could say Jagged Little Pill? Oh, that was... That was the oh, the acoustic version, right. Oh. Okay, that's... A lot of Chris Brown's in here. A lot of people don't like Chris Brown. Uh, Robbie Lowe, Grand Funk Railroad, Born to Die, 1976. I love Mark Mel and Dawn. There was something off with that album. Oh, okay. Uh, showstopper Rob, I've never liked the Doobie Brothers with Michael McDonald. Without him, the band was more rockier. Very true. Uh, I like them both, but uh, yeah, very true. Uh, Bill says, one of the reasons I bought Power Slave by Iron Maiden was the cover. I had never heard of them, but CDs were new, and it had a lot of music on it. So the cover and the length were my motivation. Oh, interesting. Yeah, when covers can do that, if, if, when I was younger especially, if the cover had the, this uh, uh, a, a really good-looking girl or something, I'd go, oh, I don't know, give it, a, give it a shot. I've got an album downstairs I'll show you that I didn't buy because of the cover, mm -hmm. but... I, I we used to have a, a little table at the radio station at CFUN and in Vancouver and we Clara Caratanuda who's the music director she would put albums out that we weren't using and people would just pick and choose and there was an album I still have it I just love the cover of it so much I remember asking Clara do you know who the model is she went what you were a Vancouver band uh, David Hubbard said little thing called love a little thing called love Hmm. Uh, Brandon Steele, it's the 10th over here in Australia, which is when it was released, so you didn't get it wrong or miss out. Okay, so it was for tomorrow. Ah. Gotcha, because I didn't include it, so that's good to know. Okay, good, because I'll do a thing on it tomorrow. Yeah. On because It was Security, right? Yeah, Security, I yeah. love that album. I, I didn't like the first two albums as much, even though I cherry-pick from it now, but... After that, three onward, I loved everything, and and I I did ask um, I did ask uh, uh, Steve Hackett if he's heard because they share a birthday in February. Steve and Peter Gabriel, have you heard the new Peter Gabriel? He says no, no. Peter's very. He says I haven't talked to him since February. Um, so the Celine seven eight six. Uh, um, oh, he's just commenting to somebody else. Uh, Mark says hi, John and Shannon. Hi, Mark. Uh, Darren says, Pat Metheny, Zero Tolerance for Silence isn't a good album. It's like Lou Reed's Metal Machine music. Oh, uh, number one album on this list, Ke Kevin Federline, Britney's ex. He even have He did, yeah, what? he did. Yeah, it's a good. It's not a bad album cover. I mean, if I didn't know the guy, I would go. I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, um, Rich Leach, uh, Dokken, Shadow Life. Oh, Dokken, yeah. Yeah. Uh... Pornography by The Cure. Mm. Uh, got Lynch Mob Wicked Sensation because of the cover. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I used to love uh, album covers. and I, mean, I remember walking into, and I've said this many times on the broadcast, walking into a record store and being excited. That's my, my go-to sentence line philosophy of, of, of not knowing because we didn't have the internet. And we go into a record store and you never knew what you were going to find. You kind of heard so-and-so might have, through Rolling Stone maybe, that was going to release an album. But you walked in there and you didn't know. And you didn't know what the sales were necessarily unless you had a good newspaper, that, unless the record store uh, was just a mom and pa. They wouldn't advertise it. So you walk in there and you're going, should I buy the three ninety nine dollars album on sale or should I buy the brand new whatever album, Genesis album? What do you do? Because we didn't have, we, you know what, we didn't have money. And then when we graduated, we had rent to pay. And so we had to, again, decipher and be discerning of going, oh, should I buy this or that, right? Uh, David Hubbard, Neil Young song from Trans, oh, little thing called love. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. What's, I, I was thinking of another song. Though. Hold on. I was thinking of another tune from that album. Okay, let me look it up. I, it's killing me. Pretty sure there was another song we played that was a single. Hold on. Uh, nope. Little thing called Love Ya. Let me look up. 
No, 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 you're right. That must have been it. Yeah, you must have. Yeah, because they have a video with it, too. So that must be it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, we're talking to each other here. Sorry. Well, that's good. Uh, hike with Mike. Uh, any winger, any winger album. Oh, that's winger. Like, yeah. Never been a fan. Uh, the Wall Floyd. I've had a few people, and remember, I'm the guy who said The Wall by Pink Floyd should have been a, 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 a single album. Um, and But that's how I look at it. I don't love the album. I loved Dark Side of the Moon. I, I loved, uh, uh, I didn't love Animals. I liked it. Um, Wish You Were Here. Loved it a lot. Parts of Amagama even I loved, you know. But yeah. Yeah. I, I think for me when I there was albums that I got because I liked the single and then of course I purchased the album and you know, for me, like eight times out of ten, I you know, I wouldn't say, Oh my gosh, that's an amazing album, but there's been a few where I've been, you know what, that really, yeah. you know, did it for me. But a lot of times I would buy albums because of singles thinking, Okay, there's gotta be tens of other ones that are just like it yeah. but not always, right? Victim so, of Love by Elton John. It's the only album. Even, in le even Leather Jackets, which people usually say that's the worst. Um, but Victim of Love, I just tried to listen to it. I can listen to it more now than I ever could before. But that, that's a tough one. The Disco album by Elton John. I think it was 79 when it was released. Uh, Rick May, uh, Billy Joel, Cold Spring Harbor. Yes, yeah, right in the beginning. Unfortunately, he got his, his bad album out of there way early. Yeah, yeah, right in the beginning. Um, show a star for Rob. My worst LP ever bought was Andromeda, Girl by Earth and Fire. It contains one good track. Oh. The, the, I'm trying to think if I ever bought an album with just, God, I must have bought tons of albums. Um, the worst thing is, I remember my friends didn't like the uh, Bruce Blackman Starbuck album, Moonlight Feels Right. And I loved it. I, I, I know it was very, very commercial, very pop. But I, I just love that album. I don't know if I'd still like it. I was trying to get a hold of Bruce. I actually talked to him. We were, doing, we we're going to do an interview. We were going to. I'm not sure if we're still going to get around to it. But yeah, he's an interesting chap. Still has a little French hat. He still wears that. Uh, Gregory Cave. Hey, Gregory. The Hi, final Gregory. cut. Oh, yeah. Pink Floyd. Yeah. Yeah, Mark says, Mirror Ball with Pearl Jam, Neil Young. Yeah, there you go. Neil Young's come up a little bit uh, uh, tonight. Uh, I thought Sergeant Pepper would come up. Sergeant Pepper's would come up a little bit more. Um, I find it hard to listen to covers of Beatles songs. I mean, obviously there's the there's the Joe Cocker, a little help from my friend. There's just certain songs that they do a better job, but it's rare. Uh, Bob Corn, Ultimate Spinach. What is that? Hmm. Sweet Savage, The Knack, but the little girls understand. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't like The Knack enough to listen to to a lot of them, even though my Sharona is like, it's like, to me, it still sounds great. Uh, David says, I hate the filler stuff on Tommy, like Smash the Mirror. Album has a lot of great songs, but I don't think it works as a story, and it's too long. I think that uh, uh, Caleb Quay and I were talking about Tommy today where Pete Townsend asked Caleb to play on Tommy. Um, I like Tommy, I think, probably more, uh, I don't know, than, than The Wall by Pink Floyd. I don't know. No, nah, probably The Wall more. <laughs> I haven't heard Tommy in a long time. It's been, been years. Mike says, never liked the B-52's Love Shack album. Oh, I hate that song so much. <laughs> Well, you can also give you... It's what, catchy. It's really catchy. It is, it is. But I hear you. Yeah, yeah. Rick May said, Meatloaf, Dead Ringer, Hard to Follow Up, Bad to Hell. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I didn't like that album. We we were trying... I forget what station I was at. We were trying to play something off of it. And for whatever reason, the single in Edmonton at the time wasn't, uh, wasn't sticking. Uh, David Norris, the David Bowie album with fame... On it was bad. No, oh, which one was that? I was never a David Bowie fan. Let me look it up. Someone will answer it before I get to it. Oh, yeah. Stay. 
No, you go ahead. It's okay. So the chats, I'm missing chats here. Uh, Bill says, Cheap Trick does a great job covering the Beatles. Oh, Brandon. Young Americans. Okay. Brandon says, thanks for posting the whole David uh, Page interview. Oh, did I go up today? Um, I might have gone up today. Um, I put... Oh, did I even put that up? I, I, didn't, I didn't think I did. Maybe I did. I do so many videos by the end of the day. It's so strange we do this Friday Night Live because I was just telling Shannon. That was... It, was I was just... I was, I'm, like, I'm toast. I'm, <laughs> would, I spent three days trying to get the first clip for Joe Bouchard up Stay. at the end of the day because Rock History Book Stay. is killing me because it's so much work. It's hard on her, but... You know, we needed another channel to subsidize a little bit because this channel is not as consistent as we need it to be uh, to to uh, make a living. So we thought well, we got to start working on the other channel, which was always meant, by the way, to be a today in history. But, it it's, was a, always but it's always smarter to have a few different streams of uh, income. Uh, it, yeah, it, yeah, it really is. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesse says, uh, oh. And if you want to support the channel, there are we have a Patreon where we put our videos up first on there. Uh, the, the links are in the description. And if you want to make a donation, there's also a PayPal link. You can make a donation to help our channel. We'd appreciate it. T-shirts, a little bit of merch. Buy t yeah, yeah. We've been selling a lot more t -shirts. By the way, if you buy a T-shirt, send us a picture. It's just John at JohnBowden.com. No, no, it's not that. It's John Bowden at iCloud.com. And uh, or get a, 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 a get a get a hold of us on um, on Facebook. And I'll send you the, the email address. But send us a picture. Yeah, we'd like to see it. Uh, Darren says, Ultimate Spinach was a late 60s band. Uh, Jeff Skunk Baxter was a member. Oh, I didn't talk to him about that. There was so much ground. It was a three-hour. In all, we, we talk, I talked to Jason Sheff for three hours. And I think Jeff Skunk Baxter, if you combine both of them, maybe two and a half, three hours. Um, I think I still have some left on both of them. But I haven't produced them yet. I haven't put them up. Dennis says, Ozzy Osbourne's Scream from 2010. I love everything he's done, but that album I still can't vibe with today. I rarely spin it. A huge disappointment. Yeah, that, those are the kind of stories <laughs> I appreciate. They're, they're, when, you, when you love an artist and then all of a sudden they come up with something and you go, and it's, it doesn't happen all the time. I, I, I don't know if I'd say it's rare. Someone's going to branch out and do some stuff that you're not going to like. So, like, you know, Elton John. But I love almost everything Elton John's done, except... Victim of Love. I even liked the single man. A lot of people didn't like that album. I loved it. Uh, how B44, Cold Spring Harbor was released at the wrong speed of the recording. Uh, BJ's manager was his brother-in-law from his oh, first really? marriage. Really? And did him over. Still wasn't a good album. Wow. I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I haven't done a thing on Billy Joel in a while. I'd like to. <coughs> H2O Field, uh, Bowie was a genius, Young Americans. Yeah, Young Americans, that's right. Uh, got it right here. Do do the wiki. Remember that. Yeah, 1975. Young America. Young America. Uh, Maccabee, I'm a big Primus fan, but the Primus and the Chocolate Factory album was a horrible... Uh, adaptation attempt of Willy Wonka's movie soundtrack music. I've never heard of it. I, I, I'm familiar with who Primus is, but yeah, that's some mean bass. Oh, Steve Prince uh, Feely, R.I.P. Queen Elizabeth II. Yeah, that was a yeah. shock. I mean, I, I, I posted the, I'll show you, I posted the picture this week. Of, this is how close I got to Queen Elizabeth. I'll show uh. you. I know it's kind of funny, right? Uh, but you have to zoom in, really. Well, you can't really see me. I'm there, but this they, uh, Queen Elizabeth came to my. These are all the stories I was going to do today. Hold on, here we go. Queen Elizabeth was going to. There's a store right behind with. She was going to come to the store on the right hand side. I think it should be your right hand where the cars in front. I was in that corridor, and the Queen came to Miramichi, Newcastle, New Brunswick. Ooh. And uh, oops. And I was in that corridor. And when she passed by, I was there with my friend Jeff. And she, when she passed by, she, you know, she's like waving. She goes like this. Like this. Looking right at us. I'm going, I don't know. I had long hair. but So did everybody back then. She probably wasn't looking at us because we, we were too far away. But she did like this. I'm going, sorry, queen. I like the queen. 
Uh, Aaron says, hello, John Shannon, kiss the elder. Oh, kiss the elder. Yeah, a lot of people mentioned that concerning kiss. That's, that's a common one, that's for sure, yeah. Uh, Todd says, I was at the store and I saw a new CD from Firehouse and I was so excited that I bought it fast. I put it in my player and it was so bad. Oh. I looked at the cover and it was a band called Firehouse. Bad. Oh, 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 oh my God, that's one of the best ones tonight. <laughs> I, I, I might have bought, I don't know if I ever bought an album thinking it was another band. Oh, my brother did. My brother Andrew, he died at 36. He's my older brother. He's the first drummer in the family, but he wasn't disciplined. So he didn't work as hard as he should. I ended up being a better drummer than him by far. But uh, he had, we say he had to warm up his butt and he bought, he, when he, when he, when he made money with jobs, he would always uh, share stuff with us. He was very generous. We fought all the time, Andrew and I, we just never got along until he, six months before he died of cancer, we got close. But Andrew went out to buy uh, Ch one of Chilliwack's album, California Girl, you know, California Girl, you, Americans might not know that as well, but he, he, uh, Ended up finding, I thought it was, it wasn't California, California something on the Starland vocal band. So he ended up, he's, he was looking, he didn't know who sang it. So he's looking for titles and he saw California something on, on the back of the Starland vocal band's debut album. So he bought that and he bought Thin Lizzy, I'm not sure why, uh, Jailbreak because he was looking for another album. Every, the three A tracks he bought, he had a, a portable A track player called a Loud Mouth or a Big Mouth. And, uh, Every one of them were the wrong ones, but they ended up all being great albums. Amazing. I laughed at this. David, David Searle, REO is a good trouble, was a hot steaming turd. <laughs> Say a lot. Oh. Uh, David Norris, I saw the movie Spinal Tap recently. Did they do an album? It must have been bad. <laughs> yeah, they did. Steve Lukather was, uh, 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 was on their music. Irene, Brophy is on there. Hi, Irene. Hi, Irene. Welcome. Rick May, the Who Face Dances. No Keith Moon. It just isn't the same. It wasn't. I I, I, I bought it. I, I liked it. I don't know if I loved it. I haven't heard it in years. I, I should go back. What was the one with Eminence Front? That was probably the best song they released after, um, after Keith died. But, yeah, I just did a thing on Keith this this. The one guy was telling me, hey, you know, when you put the pictures up and you're trying to get people to click it, don't make it so obvious. We can tell who you're talking about. I'm going, I know, but I hate doing the clickbait thing. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But that's the only way to make money on YouTube. You've got to sort of get their curiosity and make them to click on the, on the banner. But, but yeah, it took me a long time to get there to do that. It just was hard, difficult. Uh, Darren says, Genesis, calling all stations is like Van Halen 3. Different singer and not a good album. That's a per best best comment tonight. Best comment tonight. It's very much in that lane. Uh, you couldn't win. You change lead singers. Keep most of the band. You lose the lead singer. Um, yeah. I didn't mind calling all stations. And I didn't, like I said, I didn't, I didn't love Van Halen 3. But yeah. Yeah, Gary Sharon. From, uh, from uh, what's the name of the band? Wholehearted. Uh, no, um, oh, God, I can't think of the name of the band. It'll come to me. Uh, Eric more Than Tron Words. Who sings More Than Words? More Than Words. Um, Extreme. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Eric says, off topic, apologies if you're only sticking to the topic, but what were your thoughts on David Lee Roth's recent uh, Panama re-recording? I, I don't think I heard it. Did I hear it? No, I don't think I heard it. I, his manager was nice. His manager got back to me right away when I asked for an interview and said, David's not, uh, David's not doing interviews. You'll understand in a, in a few days or a few weeks. I forget what he said. This is a few months ago. We were here. We had moved out east. And, um, and Robert Plant's manager got back to me right away, which was really nice, saying he wasn't promoting the re-release of something. I forget what it was. Uh, David says, yeah, uh, yes, his heaven and earth was a sad day for Chris Squire to go out. Yeah. Stay. Yeah, Chris Squire, that that one, you know, Alan White, Chris Squire, it's, it's hard for some people, you know, I can understand that. And and uh, Michael DeRosier, it's actually DeRosier in French, but uh, from heart, formerly of heart, I took a picture with Alan White and Alan looked like a skeleton. 
Um, and you know, he, that, he's one of his drumming heroes, right? Playing with John Lennon and so many other people. Uh, but, and when I talk to, and I've said this before, when I talk to Ellen White, he kind of sounded like this. Now, that's not his fault. He's an older man. But some people, when they get old, that's how they sound. Other people, they, they just always have the same voice. They always, they don't, their voice doesn't change into old man voice. So with Alan, I was so happy to talk to him and he was so sweet and nice, but I had to, I had to write out everything he said. Yeah, I, it, it took a long time, but it was worth it. It's Alan White. Uh, Matt Cyberson, mm -hmm. the paperback rocker. Uh, oh, sorry. Steve Bird, Heart Magazine, not the band's fault, record company greed. Yeah, uh, not, not a great, not a great one. And Matt says, a queen is a kind of magic and also hot space where weak for their standards. Yeah, I agree. Very much. I was a big, big queen fan. I like the fact that on a queen album, you would get so many different styles. You never knew what they were going to come up with next. Even the Night of the Opera, which I think was, was the first one I bought. Then I went back and I bought their debut album, which is a real rock album. <laughs> um, I really like that album, the debut album. Oh, love it. And Sheer Heart Attack. Sheer Heart Attack's the first one I bought. That's the one I like. And Neil says, Sticks Kilroy was here. Album broke up classic lineup for 15 years. It did, yeah. That's for sure. I enjoy talking to Dennis DeYoung, though, who, who actually asked for me to interview him. And that meant so much to me because I'm such a big Dennis DeYoung fan. But, yeah, so, Dennis reached uh, far-reaching. Uh, Darren says, Chilliwack and April Wine got more known outside of Canada with their late 70s and early 80s hits. Yeah, well, Chilliwack... Uh, April Wine had You Could Have Been a Lady, the Hot Chocolate Song, as a hit in the U.S., minor hit. And then Roller came up. Um, they had a hit with Roller from First Glance. Um, they had something off Harder, Faster. I forget what it was. And then, of course, Nature of the Beast. That was huge. And Chilliwack with uh, Gone, 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 My Girl. I see, but Prince Feely, what happened to Nail Sheet? We don't have time to do anything with it because it's not monetized. That's the only channel we have that's not monetized. And, and we're, we're so, the problem is our son works at Costco. And our, Chase used to edit all my videos because I can't stand watching myself. So I don't really, I don't like editing my own videos. So Chase does like a video a week now, and I do more than a video a week. And so he's we're been so tied up. He's been so tied up and tired. So we're trying to figure out a way to, to, to edit. I hate editing videos. I hate going through a video of myself because I cringe watching my own videos. It's nice that people like them. I appreciate that. It means a lot to me. But it doesn't change my mind about me watching myself where I go, oh, God, that's stupid. Stop saying, oh, <laughs> you know, like I do this thing. It drives me crazy because I don't do it on the radio. I never say, Ah, uh, on the radio. Never. It's just, but here I am, I'm interviewing someone because I try to be loosey-goosey with people when I interview them, especially today with Caleb Quay, Elton John's former guitarist. We were just really in a zone. It's the third time I talked to him. He, you know, he, he knew I had reached 100,000. He follows me on Facebook. Uh, we're friends on Facebook. <clears throat> so sometimes those interviews, I interrupted him a little too much. I don't interrupt people, as you know. But sometimes you just, I, I just want to get to the next. I'm thinking, okay, this topic's not going to get us where we need to be with this interview. I need to get the most I can get out of him. But Caleb is probably one of the nicest human beings I've ever interviewed in my life. He's just a salt. I like him. If I lived next door to him, I'd be knocking on his door every day. Stay. And he's an inspiring man too. Did run into some racism though. You know, he's a black man. He's a black rock guitarist. And he said his parents, who were both entertainers, his mother was a dancer, his father was a, a musician, <clears throat> they prepared him for what would be out there. That's a good idea. Uh, Hike with Mike. Uh, for the original Van Halen lineup, I thought Women and Children First was their worst album. Mm hmm. Yeah, I went from the first one to probably, uh, what I forget what the next one is. I bought was probably 1984. There's a couple extremes. So, oh, that was probably extreme, yeah. more than words. Extreme. I didn't mind extreme. I, I bought that album with uh, wholehearted and more than words. I didn't mind. Uh, Mark says new Ozzy uh, patient number nine is terrible. Auto tune city. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. Sometimes I'm a little late on the boat when it comes to. Well, I'm not an Ozzy Osbourne fan whatsoever. 
but I mean, you've got to have respect for the guy. And, and, and I was never, uh, uh, a lot of comments tonight. I know. I'm not going to get through everything. So I'm trying here. I'm kind of far behind. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I wasn't a black Sabbath fan either. I didn't hate them, but I never, I bought Sabotage. This was the only one I ever bought. Uh, Michael said, for the 1984 Pantera lineup, I thought Projects in the Jungle was the worst album. Oh, okay. Uh, David says, Alan White did not age well, especially if you compare to Bill Bruford. Yeah, Bill Bruford. Well, Bill Bruford looked after himself, I think, a lot more. And Bill Bruford also said to me that the 60s were the best de uh, uh, age of his life, best decade of his life. He, he just enjoyed when he was in his 60s. He, but Bill Bruford looks after himself, you can tell. Carl Palmer really looks after himself. Carl Palmer hasn't aged. Speaking of drummers, great drummers. I'm trying for another interview with Carl Palmer because Carl's doing a tour with the other two guys who are dead. Uh, um, and uh, hopefully he'll uh, do another interview with me. He was very tired when he did the interview with me. People said, was he pissed off? People didn't know him. He said, he, he seemed pissed off with the interviewer. And he wasn't pissed off. He was just tired. He didn't want to do the interview. And his, his publisher, because of the Emerson Lincoln Palmer book, said, no, no, you should do this as a big channel. And he was just visibly, you could tell he was tired, but he answered all my questions. Uh, David Cyril, I did a deep dive on Queen a few years <clears> ago <throat> and went back and listened to the whole album. So many gems in their catalog that weren't hits. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very much. I remember listening to, uh, I think it was from Sheer Heart Attack, uh, Miss Fire. Remember the little song, Don't You Miss Fire? You know. It was this little ditty song, and I remember I was just getting out of my pop phase back then. God, I'm going to crack my neck. Um, no, I'm not going to crack my neck online. I can't do it. I, I do a little crack when I, because I got into a car accident a few years ago. But I remember listening to that. I was getting out of my real pop phase, and, and Misfire is a real poppy, poppy song. You know, my best friend from the next album was a very poppy song, too, from A Night of the Town. Not A Night of the Town. Um, Oh, God. Uh, Night of the Opera. Night of the Town. That's Rod Stewart. How are we doing? Uh, oh, You're cherry picking. You have uh, well, to. I have to. Um, let's see here. Uh, we're going back and forth. Oh, Billy uh, Joel. Matt says, yeah, A Passion Play is one of the best albums of all time. Yes, I, I agree. I, I um, Yeah, and then they have the, sto the, the, the story of the hair who lost his spectacles. Yeah. James Bashir is good evening, John. And hey, Sharon. James. Hope you and your family are well. Not able to hang out, but want to say hello. I appreciate that. I picked up a few clunkers for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We it's it's an occupational hazard. You know, you're a record. You're you you uh, you're a record guy. You know, it's not an occupation. Well, it is for me, but you're going to get some bad ones. I remember I, I've said this before on the broadcast. When Tina Turner, Private Dancer, came up for a, a comeback, Same. they gave us a free copy. The record company did. When Houston came out, they gave us a free copy, uh, uh, Like a Virgin, the second Madonna. I think that was the second, if I remember, yeah. They gave us a free copy of that. Uh, we had a few where they just handed out albums, where they wouldn't, t They everyone got a copy. They wanted to, uh, oh, there was a couple of other ones in there, yeah. Uh, Pete says, Quiet Riot QR3, couldn't get into that album. Hmm. Never bought a Quiet Riot album. People are always surprised that I didn't buy a lot of uh, really, really hard rock or and or metal albums because that just wasn't my lane. I was just, I've always been more of a power pop rock guy. And then in the 80s, I started getting into artists like Bruce Hornsby. He was like, I just went nuts with Bruce Hornsby. You think I could get an interview again with the guy? I've talked to him twice. Got a picture with him. Karen Dinsmore, uh, Paul McCartney and Wings Back to the Egg. I was so excited to get it. And then so disappointed. See, that's that's common the, for people to say that about Back to the Egg. It was one of my favorite Paul McCartney albums. I like London Town, and a lot of my friends didn't like London Town. But Back to the Egg, I just love those little ditties he put in there. Uh, none of my friends liked it. Thanks, James. Yes, hello, everyone. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Maddie K USA. Cheers, my Hi, friends. Maddie. I'm a huge fan of your work. Thank you. That's very nice of you to say that. I appreciate it. Uh, Michael says, I'm ready for the weekend. And how about you? Yeah. Yeah. Going to have, uh, 
I've had this thing where I'm trying to stay away from beer because uh, uh, what's that thing I have on my face? That, eczema. I have eczema when I drink beer. So I don't drink beer. Like I might have a beer a week, right? And then I'll have a little cha- a little uh, a nightcap of scotch. But uh, when I do, some guy the other day was funny. You know, some of the comments that I get are so silly. They're, they're like the based, sometimes they're based on my looks and I'm going, come on. Remember Shelly Joyce? I used to work with this girl named Shelly Joyce. She used Stay. to be on the air just before me. Stay. And I and I asked her once. I said, I remember you. You used to be the weather girl at uh, on Czech TV in Victoria, Stay. or not? No, Victoria. And I said, what was that like? You know, being on TV every night. She's, oh my God. I would sometimes vomit before I went on the air or after. People were saying, oh my God, that girl looks weird. Shelly was a nice looking lady. She had a different look though. She was like in her own lane as far as her looks. And she's a great writer, nice girl, hung out with her a little bit uh, back then. And she said that she's the one that prepared me for more than anybody else. That when you're on the screen, it's one of the reasons I never wanted to get into TV. When you're on the screen, you're going to get people who compare you to other people like, oh, Robert Downey Jr. sure went downhill. Or uh, what's the one? Pat Oswalt. You're a, you're a, you're a, uh if oh, Pat Oswalt and Steve Buscemi, and Steve Buscemi and Robert Downey Jr. had a baby, they'd look like you, which I think is pretty funny, though. I mean, I can see why they would even say that, but but that's funny, and I left that comment on. But this week, some guy said, "Oh my God, put some makeup on. You've got like a red thing." And I'm going, and I looked at the video he was commenting on. I'm going, "It's not any worse than it is right now." And I thought to myself, maybe it was just the lighting. Who no, was- maybe at one point in the lighting. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. No one ever complains about the way you look funny. <laughs> uh, Maddie, can that you I can say, understand. Say, does anyone remember a Tarkus? Uh, what, the album? Yeah. There wasn't a band. I remember the ELP album, Tarkus. Yeah. I did a thing, top ELP uh, songs on uh, Rocky Street Book. You should check that out. Trans9 says, worst album I ever bought, Psycho Circus from Kiss, huge disappointment, Comes up and a last lot. Kiss item I ever purchased. Comes up a lot, and The Elder. That's, that's one that comes up an awful lot. Uh, Transparent Media Truth said, YouTube began slipping after Zoo TV. Yeah. I knew you were going to go there. Yeah. Uh, let's say Lean, 786, worst album cover, or Lean's Waking yeah. and Dreaming. Waking Band and members dreaming. with closed eyes. And with their shirts off, just yeah. weird. <laughs> it's always called, uh, Jerry Murata was on the cover of that, too. And I've interviewed two of the guys on there. John, of course, the leader, and Jerry. Um, yeah, that was... Uh, Jerry Murata loved working with Orleans. It meant so much to him. Like, a lot. Uh, Michael says, got to go now. Thank you so much. Goodbye and good Have night. Have a really nice night. Thanks for dropping by. I appreciate it. Steve Bird said, thanks for another fun show. Thank mm-hmm. you. Uh, Rick May, Hindu love gods. Thought Warren uh, Zevon. Zevon. Zevon, sorry, fronting Not Arden, her era. Uh, might work. Maybe I expected too much. Uh, a, a, a Warren Zevon album that I loved, and I say this a lot on the broadcast, is uh, that my friends didn't like was uh, The Envoy. You know, Excitable Boy, I really liked. Uh, the song itself is disturbing, right? I was just watching a thing tonight on on, on uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. There was this How It Really Happened on HLN. I was watching that. Um, and they were talking about him playing with Bones, and I thought, that sounds like Excitable Boy. Um, it, it, does anybody know if that's... If, I, I don't know. No, the math doesn't work. Excitable Boy was the 70s. Uh, when, when was, uh, not that we want to talk about Gosh. Jeffrey Dahmer, but I remember I made the connection tonight. I'm going, that, that sounds like Jeffrey Dahmer, that song. Uh, Gerald yeah. Lee, John and Shannon, congratulations on your 101K subscribers. You. So happy for you. Thanks. Thank you. One of the things we, we, all my friends are telling me that are on YouTube is going, you need to pay money to be a suggested video. You need to, to, to make your videos more, because uh, some of the, I'm not going to mention their names. So some of the bigger guys, I know they do that because they always show up after my videos. So they're spending money to go on there. And that's a smart thing to do. There's nothing wrong with that. But first of all, <clears throat> that costs money to be to be able to do that. And let's just say we're not there yet. Uh, Darren says, Elton John's leather jacket album would be better if the title was different. That's why Phil Collins' No Jackets Required was more successful. 
Leather Jackets is always mentioned as one of the worst Elton John albums. It, it's usually always up there. Some people, like I said a while ago, don't like a single man. There's certainly a group of people who don't like those two <clears throat> mid-70s albums. Um, uh, not Captain Fantastic, but the two after that. Um, uh, Rock of the Westies, I loved it. And Blue Moves, I loved that one too. A lot of different styles on that album. John at the Village Advisory. Hi, John. Hi hey. from Melbourne, Australia. So many albums that I purchased have been already mentioned. Could only add Dire Straits. One that, one that had calling Elvis. Oh, uh, was that the EP? What, my my favorite is the first and Brothers in Arms. Someone was talking about uh, <clears throat> Avalon by Roxy Music. I saw a, a thing on it. There's a thing on YouTube that just came up on how brilliant that album was. I think it's the one How to Be a Great Producer or whatever that channel is. I watched his stuff. I don't get a chance to watch a lot of other people who do this. I'm always, I did this in radio. I don't like to be influenced by other people. I just kind of like to, I kind of really want to be myself. But it's like everyone on YouTube, hey man, what's, how's it going? What do they, Chase does it really well. They all do the same thing. They intro their videos and they ask, they ask the audience, oh, they always have to watch your daughter. She's autistic and she has seizures. Um, they always ask the same question. They're always asking a question. Oh, she wants to play games with yes. you. At I'm 10 sure. o'clock, our time, um, Joe, you, you want to come over and say hi? So we usually have our chat from... Over here. Say hi. Say hi. Come over. There's our artistic wonder. Say we hi. love her. No, look at... There you go. Thank you, Danica. She's so cute. She's sweet. So we usually have our chats from 9 to 10. Oh. And then... Oh, thank you, Maddie. John oh, and Shan, wow. you are delighted... Thanks, you are Maddie. delighted to hear your depth of knowledge is incredible. Congrats on all your success. Thank you, Maddie. That was very kind That's of you. Very, very kind. Very, very generous. Appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks. So we're going to have to. Uh, we're going to have to. Uh, uh, but we usually come on from nine to ten, and at ten o'clock. today. And of course, Danica has her. We actually play Scrabble. Yeah. So that is kind of. And if you, if you know anybody with autism, you know that you have to do it right on the clock. It's got to be as. They're very particular about their timing. This is the worst lighting. I look like I'm 300 years old. Uh, yeah. No, you look amazing. You always look amazing. We'll try to maybe. We'll Remember that Seinfeld episode where the, the the he was dating this girl and then he changed the lighting. He'd go to another room and she looked really bad. I looked like the really bad person. Yeah. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Yes, we, thanks. We always appreciate having you along. It's nice to see whenever I'm on and I see people just going back and forth, chatting with each other. So sort of like the. You know, like yeah. Maddie Kay, thank you. That's yeah. very kind. Of you. And we're just thank you everyone for just uh, being a part of this with us. We yeah, it means an awful lot to us. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's a lifeline for us too. People forget that. I mean, sure, I interview all these people, but I don't know them. And now and then, I'll have someone who'll say, "Hey, John, I see you again," and they will remember me. But but you know, it's this is this is a nice way of a nice thing to do. And and Pete from Riverview is coming to see us tomorrow. We met him on here, so there you go. Good night, all. Bye, everyone. Take care. Take care.